On today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how important it is to read the instructions. Welcome back to the garage guys. Thanks for tuning in. We're back on Project Ethel today and we're gonna get this engine assembled no matter what. We're gonna push through the problems because we've been stalled out way too long on this relatively simple engine build. But honestly, the biggest problem has been me. So I'm sure a lot of you guys will agree the worst possible time to go grocery shopping is when you're hungry because you're gonna end up with a cart full of garbage. Well, it's kind of what I did when I bought all these parts for this engine. Hungry for horsepower, I ended up putting a bunch of stuff in my cart that it didn't really mesh together well. In fact, it didn't mesh at all. But where I really dropped the ball was the pistons. I knew I wanted some aftermarket pistons. I had to buy pistons. I wanted some domes so I can get some high compression. Well, there's a little more arithmetic involved than just grabbing the biggest dome you can get. So for whatever reason, I checked the manufacturer's website and looked through questions and answers on multiple different platforms. Everything said these pistons would work with my combination. In fact, the combinations anywhere from 58 cc combustion chambers all the way up to 74 are supposed to fit this piston just fine. Which, you know, I guess I took them at their word and I bought them. Problem being, when I put it together, I got a 5.7 rod, stock 348 whatever crank, you know, stock 350 crank. I put it all together and I got intake and exhaust valves, direct contact with the piston. I doubled up on some gaskets just to see how close I was, still nowhere close to clearing. So then I actually got a little creative. I thought, you know, maybe I could downsize the cam. So I went and put a stock 350 cam in there. This cam's like a 390 lift. I had like 520 lift cam. So I got a little bitty cam in there, still made contact. We put our 74cc Corvette heads on there, still made contact. So finally we give up. The pistons weren't gonna work. And one final desperate attempt to make them work, I took a Dremel to them. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, <laughs> I murdered a good piston with a Dremel. And you know, it's been done, people do cut pistons, they make tools for dropping through the valve hole and actually cutting valve reliefs. It's just, it ain't happening. Not here, not me, not now. So what I've done is ordered some replacement pistons. So hopefully you guys don't yell at me for what I'm about to show you, but decisions were made. This engine has beat me up. It's already got cylinder wall damage. There's damage to the deck. It's, it's not been machined in who knows how many years. I'm gonna run this engine as my mule. I'm not gonna waste any more money trying to put any more go fast parts on it. I bought some pistons that are just regular old flat tops. These are the cheapest pistons I could find. I mean, seriously, they were $93 shipped to my door. Uh, I thought they were speed pros, but I guess they're they're just nobodies. Nobody liked these enough to claim them and put their name on them. So we're gonna throw these in the engine, put it all back together, do a test fire, and use this as the mule to get the transmission working, to get the controls working. I mean, we've got a lot of bugs to sort out still. So one of the worst parts about this engine build for me has been these connecting rods. These are the match rods off the crankshaft that came out of that Corvette engine. These are the OE style press fit rods, which means you pretty much have to heat this to the point of lava, throw the wrist pin in and hope you get it in the right spot before you burn flesh or it cools down and you get your wrist pin stuck halfway in the hole. Because if you mess up, then you gotta put the piston on the press and take a chance at breaking a piston. So it's a little bit nerve wracking, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this jig here. I had this left over from when I did the pop-ups. The holes don't line up. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take you guys along, show you what I do, and I'm gonna try to freehand the first wrist pin in here and uh, see if I can't get it right the first shot. All right, so let's do this thing. What I've got here is a bottle of map gas. I'm gonna be using this to heat up just the small end of my connecting rod enough so that it'll expand to allow this wrist pin to easily slide through that hole. The trick here is to get this up to about 600 degrees. So we're gonna use our infrared here to kind of keep an eye on it. And when it's just right, I gotta hold it in the exact right spot, aim the correct direction. You know, the orientation does matter and we gotta get it about centered. Now this is gonna happen pretty quick. Once I get it hot and put it in there, there's pretty much a, a one shot deal. If I miss it, then we gotta go put it on the press and we don't wanna do that. So let's put some heat to this rod and see if we can't get one in. It's 
it's going to take a whole lot of heat. I just wanted to show you guys kind of what that did. Yeah, we're 250 and dropping quickly. So, yeah, it takes a lot of heat and it drops really quick. So you really got to be on your game here. So I've got my orientation right. We're going to heat this puppy up till it's just about red hot. Another quick check. Uh, four and a half. Yeah, so we're getting there. Not quite there yet. safer in the ballpark uh, about 500 so we're getting close so I'm gonna see it start to turn color once it turns color that's when I know it's time to try to slide it in the hole Here it is. I've got the one in the right direction. I'll slide that right in. We're gonna center that up. All right, so that's pretty much it. It's still a little bit warm, but that is how you heat up and install a wrist pin in a press fit rod. Uh, it's kind of dangerous. It's definitely hot work, but if you get it right, if you get lucky, it's not too awful bad. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of my new pistons installed on my rods and catch back up with you guys when we're just about ready to put them in the block. So I got a little carried away, ended up getting all the connecting rods attached to pistons, and I've got seven of them installed in the block already. We've still got one more to go, so let's do it right now. All right, so here it is, the last one. We've got the rings installed. It is uh, clocked the right direction, and uh, got a little lube here on the bearing. So it should be all set and ready. I've been using just a piece of fuel line here on these um, studs to keep it from scoring the crank or the walls. So uh, let's go drop this bad boy in. Oh, wait, wait, we got to do something else first. I'm going to put this little guy on here. So admittedly, this is not the most high-end ring compressor. Um, it's a universal compressor. I've got a couple of them. They work okay. I, you know, they're... They get me done. They get it done. I don't do a lot of engine building. At least I haven't been until recently. So we're probably going to buy us an upgraded uh, piston ring compressor at some point. But this is going to get this job done. So I've got the dot to the front, just like the rest of these. I don't know if it's right, but that's what we're doing. And the trick with this guy is, I've got these studs in my way, so I keep having to clock my uh, compressor around. I think that's going to work. All right, give it another little, another click. And here's how the magic happens. Me and this hammer have built this engine twice now. Um, and you know, all the mistakes and errors have been nothing to do with the hammer. The hammer has been solid. So I'm gonna give it a little tappy tap. Keep tapping. Happened. Look at that. Like it was made for it. And uh, I even got the connecting rod on the right thing on the, the crank there. So let's flip this thing over and put our last rod bearing cap on. Ugh.
There she be. So I've already got my bearing installed, so all I gotta do is get that piston up and then put the cap on and we're gonna be in business. Urgh. And there it is. Pull my hoses off. Make sure I got this clock the right way. So let's get some nuts on here. Go ahead and torque this thing down. Now I've been torquing these to 45 foot pounds. I read that on the internet, that's the correct torque spec, so it must be true. Uh, we'll find out. Essentially, these are secondhand bearings because I've already installed these in this engine once and ripped it all the way back apart. So there's a few things not working in this engine's favor. All right, that's it. So I've got studded four bolt mains. We've got a uh, factory Chevy crank and rods out of that 84 Corvette. It was all in pretty good low mileage condition. Everything's torqued. We've got our flat tops installed, cam and timing chains installed. So at this point, I think it's time to roll it over and get some heads installed. All right, so here's our gaskets. We're just running a composite Fell Pro, nothing special. Um, it's probably a good thing we're not running those pistons at this point because uh, I don't know how much compression these things can handle. I mean, they're kind of just enough to say they're a head gasket. There's really not a lot to these. You really need like a, a copper or a multi-layer steel gasket to really get some high performance sealage right here. All right, so that one's on. Let me stick the other one on. This one's been used a time or two for uh, test fitting, but it'll be all right. Man, these studs make everything suck. I'm kind of wondering if I shouldn't have waited to install the studs until the heads were actually on. I don't know. I've really not done a lot of work with head studs. I just thought they looked cool. Okay, used them one time years ago on a supercharged car. It's still blue head gaskets, so I don't even know why I'm running them now. So let's talk about cylinder heads. These are the heads off of that Crossfire injection Corvette I bought. They are uh, not the best heads ever but I think they'll work for what we're trying to accomplish here. There we go. Ah, that scared me. All right, so I went through these and I put some new seals in them. Uh, I took the valves all out, cleaned the backside, everything. You might've saw that post, they were covered in carbon. Um, but we're not running EGR or any of the emissions equipment, so carbon should not be an issue anymore. So let's see if we can't get these bad boys down. Let me get out the uh, handy dandy uh, engine assembly tool here and give it a little love. So it's just about down. Man, I tell you, these studs are a nightmare to get gaskets and heads on and off. I don't know if it's because they're cheap studs or if it's just HUD studs are not supposed to be installed until the heads are down. Cause then I could have just put the Allen wrench on them, tighten them in and then put the nuts on. So it looks cool this way, but may not be the most efficient way. So I got a whole bunch of washers and a whole bunch of nuts. It's just pretty simple. Washer and nut per stud. And let's get some nuts. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do the first round of torque with my little 3 8 impact. looks like we need 80 foot pounds for these ARP studs. My 3 8 only goes up to uh, 75 foot pounds. So let's find the big dog. So I got the half inch torque wrench, which goes up to 250. So this is plenty to get the job done. Ching. So there's 80 foot pounds. So we'll throw our adapter on here and our little 16 point or whatever socket. Let's torque some heads. Guys, you aren't gonna believe what I just did. 
I put the rockers and push rods on cylinder one and rolled this engine around. I still had valve to piston contact. So I've changed everything but the block and the crank so far. I, uh, I, I found the problem. Uh, turns out it was 100% me. Um, so let me, let me show you what I just discovered. So when I bought all these parts, I got a lot of stuff from like Amazon Warehouse and other places like that. I didn't really pick what I bought, I got what I could get and for the best deal possible. Well, when it comes to my timing set, I ended up getting a Comp Cams Magnum, you know, what I thought was a pretty standard timing set. Well, it turns out this timing set is a little more complex than I originally thought. So typical Chevrolets have a dot on the big sprocket and a dot on the little sprocket. You go dot to dot, you're done. It's not complicated. But this little guy has a dot. But then over here, we've got a, a, a rectangle. And down here somewhere, there's a triangle right there. And you'll see there's a keyway there, a keyway there, and a keyway there. Well, I've got these nice square keyways, so I put it in the square keyway hole. And according to the instructions, the circle or the dot, when you go dot to dot, is straight up timing no mechanical advance here in the cam crank correlation well it turns out there's a little more to it than that apparently if you want the circle you got to use the keyway that's got a half circle on top and if you're using the rectangle you use the rectangle hole and if you're using the triangle you use the one that's got a little bit of a point to it so what i had done is completely timed this thing incorrectly i mean it was not even close and that's why i had valve interference that's why I took the pistons back out of it and destroyed a piston and bought another camshaft and swapped my whole plans around and now have a low compression standard 350. So I'm a little bit beside myself right now, but we're still going to do what I said I was going to do. We're going to get this thing running and we're going to use it to get Ethel going. It just means all that much quicker. I've got to get that other engine built and get some high compression and some E85 in this car. So all the extra work and the extra expenses of all the adjustments I made trying to compensate for my own stupidity sucks. It, it just sucks. There's no other way of putting it. But on the other side of it, there's a glimmer of hope because now all I've got to do is build a small block Chevy. And how hard could that be? Let's get to work. First thing I'm going to do is get my oil pump installed and torque to the proper specs. Click, click. We're going to get the timing cover installed and properly torqued. And now for a very important custom piece, the oil pan. Nice. Now that the oil pan's installed, as I lube the valve train, everything doesn't drain out on the floor. So, them, them jokers rattle. You hear that? That is a solid lifter rattle. Hmm, I guess we'll find out. With the lifters and push rods installed, it's time for a little bit of intake action. And here it is. For the first time in a long time, I've made some progress on ethyl. So I've got this thing kind of mocked up for the most part. I'm missing a few components I didn't know I was missing. I don't have a balancer. The one in the Corvette actually was coming apart, so I tossed it. So I've got that on the way. I've got to do some exhaust work and figure out how these headers are going to exit the car. Probably going to buy a different set of valve covers because you see right here, we're a little too close for comfort. I just don't feel like beating up a new header. Um, but yeah, we're going to use this old crummy carburetor. This is just to break it in. All I need to do is hold the RPM with it. We're going to keep the sniper system in the box until we're ready to put it in ethyl. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's that's it. That's uh, That was a painful video to make. I uh, can't tell you how bad I did not want to disclose the error of my ways. But guys, we all do it. And the best part is now you guys can learn from my mistakes. But I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.